Hey guys, welcome to another video from EcoPoint. Today again, I have a few practice questions for you guys, which we shall try to finish in 5 to 10 minutes, okay? So the estimated regression lines are given as y equals to... So the first question, the estimated regression lines are given as follows. y equals to 10 plus 0.4x, x equals to minus 4 plus 1.6y. Now, when your regression lines are given like this, that essentially means that the first one is a line y on x and the other one is x on y. So uh, then the coefficient of correlation between x and y is the this is a pretty much straightforward question because from the first line you get what your b y x that is the regression coefficient of y on x what that would be that is clearly 0.4 and from the second one, you get what is the regression coefficient x on y, and that is 1.6. With that, you can easily figure out r, which is your correlation coefficient, because r square is bxy into byx. So r is equal to the square root of 1.6 multiplied by 0.4. So that is 0.64 square root of that and square root of that is 0.8. So 0.8 is the correct answer. Question number two for the day. For a distribution, mean is equal to 26, median is 14, mode is 7. The distribution would be positively skewed, negatively skewed, symmetrical, none of the above. Had it been symmetrical, then absolutely symmetrical, then mean median mode would have been the same, right? So of course, it's not symmetrical. What you have here is that clearly mean, median, and mode, they are they are in a certain relationship. Mean is 26, median 14, and mode is 7. That means mean is more than median, which is more than mode. So if that is happening, then that means what must be happening. So if you graphically try to understand it, so 7 comes before 14 and then comes your 26, right? So at 7, you have the highest point or the highest frequency, right? So that means your graph goes up like this. But since your median that is the 50% of the area gets covered at 14 and the mean is actually 26. So don't go by the exact, this is not the exact diagram that it would be. I'm just trying to give you a picture. So clearly it's a scenario where your distribution would be right skewed or positively skewed. So this is a case when mean is greater than median is greater than mode, it's the case when it's a positively skewed distribution. Positively skewed. That is right skewed. So A should be the correct. Question number three for the day. For a normal distribution, consider the following statements. It has two points of inflection. The distance from the mean zero of these inflection points is plus minus sigma. That is the standard deviation. The answer codes are both one and two statements are true, neither, only one, only two. What would be the correct answer? To answer this question, there are two concepts that you should know. You should know about normal distribution. Second thing, you should know what is point of inflection. Now, point of inflection is where the curvature changes. So a normal curve looks a little like this, right? Now, the curvature changes at x equals to mu plus minus sigma. So there are two uh, points of inflection. One is mu plus sigma. One is mu minus sigma for any normal distribution. Okay. Now, this means our first point is correct. The statement is correct. It has two inflection points. And the second one is also correct that the distance from mean zero of these inflection points is plus minus sigma. If mu is zero, then of course the distance is plus minus sigma, right? Any which way the distance is. So the correct answer would be option A, both one and two are true. Next quick question, geometric mean of two, six 
and x is equal to 6, what is the value of x? Well, the geometric mean of three numbers would be 2 multiplied by 6 multiplied by x to the power 1 by 3. And this turns out to be 6. That means 12x is equal to 6 cube which means x will be equal to 6 into 6 into 6 upon 12. So it will be 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 1 if you cancel it. And then this also can get can gets cancelled and you get 18. So the correct answer should be 18. Next quick question. Standard error of a large sample of size n from a population whose variance is sigma square is, you should always remember this, if you have a, uh, you know, sampling distribution, the standard error is always sigma by root n because the sigma of x bar, sigma square of x bar is population variance upon n. So the standard error is the standard deviation of uh, sampling distribution. So that would be sigma by root n. This is one of a very common question that could be asked in any of the exams. Last quick question. What is the probability of throwing a total of eight from a single throw of two dice? You are throwing a single, um, you're throwing two dice and what is the probability of getting a total of 8? So for this, you need to know all the possibilities. Now, possibilities, if you have two dice, so die 1 can have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And die 2 can also have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since what we are looking at is the total. So let's understand what the total will be. This position, the total is 1, 1, 2. This position, it will be 3. Here 4, here 5, here 6, here 7. Similarly here, the total will be 2, 1, 3. Here 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You're getting a total of 8 here. And you would notice in the similar way, you will get 8 here. Similar way, you will get 8 here. Similar way, you will get 8 here. Why I am creating this entire thing is that this will help you in any, any questions asked for that matter relating to total. So clearly what you can see is you're getting a total of 8 at these 5 positions. Uh, you could have done it without uh, creating this matrix also. You, you could have seen that how will you get uh, a total of uh, 8 is 2, 6. Of course, then 6, 2 we can also give you that. Then with 3, 5, that means 5, 3. And also with 4, 4, you can get a total of this. So therefore, in total, 5. Now, how many total cases do you have? If you observe, these are total 36 cases. So in terms of probability, 5 by 36, there are 5 positions where you can get a total of 8 and out of how many? Out of the total 36. So probability is always equal to the favorable cases upon total cases, that's how you should visualize probability. So favorable cases are the cases where I'm getting total of 8, 5 such cases are there and total cases are 36 and therefore C is the correct answer. I hope this kind of uh, practice will help you out in your actual exam and you. I hope you're getting a picture of how varied kind of questions you can get. Now the thing is, if you have simple questions to deal with, 
just be as quick as possible that's the key for simple questions be as quick as possible so that you have leftover time to revise and also leftover time for questions where you require a little deeper insight and that will take some time thank you very much i hope this will really help you